This video will present the paper, What's Hidden in a Randomly Weighted Neural Network? Remarkably, this paper shows that given a randomly initialized wide ResNet 50, you can find a subnetwork within this dense architecture that can outperform the ResNet 34 when the ResNet 34 has been trained with stochastic gradient descent, optimized for ImageNet classification, and the wide ResNet 50 subnetwork found with the algorithm presented in this paper has not been trained at all. The weights are still from this uh, random distribution and it doesn't require any further training to surpass the performance of a trained ResNet 34. This is another paper questioning the way that we think about optimizing neural networks. Similar to papers like the lottery ticket hypothesis that finds that you can find a sub network, which is a sparse network within this dense architecture, that when retrained with the same initialization can outperform the entire dense architecture. It's also similar to a paper titled weight agnostic neural networks that shows that you can find a connectivity or a topology pattern that even when all the weights have the exact same value, it can perform tasks like bipedal control and MNIST classification. This video is going to present the results presented in this paper was hidden in a randomly weighted neural network, as well as the algorithm that they use for finding the subnetworks within the dense architectures, and most notably in the results, we'll look at the impact that they find on increasing the width of each layer in the case of convolutional layers, meaning having more channels per each layer, and how this impacts the ability to find these subnetworks. This paper is building on the work from Deconstructing Lottery Tickets, Zero Signs, and the Super Mask, where they show that you can find this mask that you put on the random weights and achieve about 41% accuracy on CIFAR-10 and about 86% accuracy on MNIST. This paper is going to further explore this idea and remove some of the things of this algorithm to optimize it and find a better subnetwork. This paper is similar to a lot of other related works that have been exploring alternative ways to optimize neural networks. Things like the lottery ticket hypothesis that finds that there's this sparse network within a dense architecture that can outperform the entire network. Things like dense to sparse training where you train a dense network and then you would do algorithms like pruning to have this sparse architecture which is more parameter efficient. And then algorithms like neural architecture search. Similarly, I thought this paper was related to uh, the DARTS algorithm where they have this uh, differentiability on the edges between the nodes and they use this in order to do differentiable architecture search compared to uh, techniques like the reinforcement learning with the controller and the child network and these kinds of neural architecture search algorithms. Also interestingly is the idea of adaptive topologies. Learning these kinds of uh, networks that adapt as they train is similar sort of to this idea of pruning away the edges using stochastic gradient descent. One of the core ideas to this paper is the way in which they find the subnetworks within the dense architecture. So in the lottery ticket hypothesis, they use this algorithm for finding the subnetwork. They prune away the network after they train it, and then they reset it to the initial weights using the new mask on the original uh, weights, and then they retrain it and repeat this until they reach the desired sparsity of the network. In the deconstructing lottery tickets, zero signs in the super mask paper, which first showed kind of the inspiration for this idea that you could achieve this kind of accuracy by just applying a mask to a randomly weighted network, they have this approach where they have a random variable which is either set as one or zero, either masking the weight or not masking the weight, and then they have these probabilities p that are the output of a sigmoid and are learned using stochastic gradient descent. So in this paper, they have a lot of stochasticity with the way that the mask is applied to the network. So it's sampled with the probability of whether they include that weight or not. Compared to that, this paper, uh, what's hidden in a randomly neural, weighted neural network, isn't gonna have this kind of stochastic sampling with the edges. Rather, it's gonna have this algorithm for learning a uh, set of parameters on each of the edges on whether to include them or not and having no kind of uh, stochastic inference. This is a high level description of the edge pop-up algorithm that's used to find the subnetworks within the dense architectures in this paper, what's hidden in a randomly weighted neural network. The idea is to assign a scalar score S to between each node or each weight. So the idea is that, say this is node U and this is node V, you have a score on this weight between these two nodes. And then at each layer, you're gonna take the top K percent of scores, introducing this extra hyperparameter K, which is sort of the sparsity parameter denoting how many uh, weights there are in each layer. So then when you're doing the backward propagation to update the scores S, you have to use this straight through estimator idea in order to not have zero gradient with respect to the thresholding function of only taking the top K percent of scores. And then you update these scores using this kind of update rule, which we'll get into further. The edge pop-up algorithm is gonna use the scores assigned to each of the weights in order to optimally find the subnetwork within the dense architecture. So the idea behind updating the scores over each weight is that you have to use the straight through estimator in order to take the gradient with respect to this thresholding function as taking the top K percent of the weights in each of the layers. So the idea here is that it's either one or zero. So that means that the gradient is zero everywhere with respect to the score. So rather you can use this idea of the straight through estimator where you treat this like an identity function and just set the gradient to be one. 
So then what you're gonna to do to update the score of each of the weights in the layer is you're gonna update it by taking the loss with respect to the input to the V node, multiply it by the weight of the UV connection, and then multiply it by the output of the U node. So Z sub U being the output after it's passed through that uh, you know, nonlinear thresholding function and nonlinear function like the ReLU or a sigmoid or something like that. And then you're going to uh, multiply it by this equation to get the update. And then you're going to use this to update the scores over each weight, having the learning rate parameter and then this uh, gradient, which is defined here. Hopefully this example will help you provide some intuition on how the scores are updated during training to find the optimal subnetwork within the dense architecture. So in this case, we're saying that the same output is coming out of node A and node B. They're both sending 20 to node C, or at least they're both trying to because only the A node is actually connected to the C node because it has a higher score than the B node of being the score being 2 compared to the score of 1. So then also notably is that the weight between A to C is 5 and the weight between B to C is negative 5. So now let's say we get, we're doing the training and we get our differentiable of the loss with respect to the input to this C node and it's really negative. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use this update to update the score of A to C with respect to the loss and we're going to update the score of B to C with respect to the loss. So we're integrating this weight as we're doing the update. So since this weight is negative 5 and this weight is 5 using opposites to display the example, we see that the uh, score of A is going to be reduced by 1,000 and the score of B to C is going to be updated by 1,000. And then oppositely, if it's a positive 10 score that comes back from the differentiable loss with respect to the input to C, we're going to add to this score and subtract to this score. So you see how in this kind of way, even if the weight isn't included in the training, so in this case, our weight from B to C, our score from B to C, is going to be updated even though we're not using it right now in the subnetwork. We've just seen how the edge pop-up algorithm is demonstrated when you're using these kind of uh, neurons, sort of having like a fully connected type of architecture. But in this paper, they're exploring image classification networks like convolutional networks and the uh, wide resnets. So in this case, they're using convolutional layers. So the extension provided in the appendix of the paper between uh, having this algorithm on individual neurons to the convolutional kernels is to sort of think about it as how the kernel is connecting to different channels or different feature maps within the network. And this is kind of the translation of sparsity between these kinds of neurons and fully connected networks to up to uh, these convolutional layers. The authors originally test their algorithm on convolutional networks with varying depth in the number of convolutional layers they have. And this is done to keep this algorithm on the same playing ground as papers like the lottery ticket hypothesis and deconstructing lottery tickets. So for example, the convolutional six architecture described here has six convolutional layers. These are results of the initial architectures that they test. So in this case, the horizontal lines, the orange and the blue line, denote the architectures when you optimize them with Atom and Stochastic Gradient Descent Optimizers, you're optimizing the weight to perform the best that they can on this task. And then the red and the blue lines are demonstrating the performance of the subnetworks when they're pruned to this level of sparsity, and then the weights are still randomly initialized. There's no fine-tuning of the weights. So interestingly, in all cases, they have this optimal range of between 30 to 70% of the weights achieves the best performance on the task. So the, sort of the upper bound and the lower bound of this is that as the weights go to 100%, you just have this randomly initialized dense network. And then as the weights go to zero, you don't really have any weights in the network, so it can't uh, perform the task that way as well. So it's interesting to see this trend as the uh, networks get larger. You see that at the eight layer convolutional network, the subnetwork that is sampled from the uniform distribution with this uh, Kaiming distribution is able to outperform the optimized network. An interesting characteristic of these dense networks that are used to find the subnetworks within them is that as you increase the width or the number of channels, the number of filters in each of the convolutional layers, you get better performance on the subnetworks. So in this case, in the uh, four layer convolutional network, as you increase the width, you're getting an increasingly high accuracy on the uh, percentage of the weights or the subnetworks within the network. And this is also true in the case of the six layer convolutional network. One attribution of the gains of increasing the width or the number of filters in each of the convolutional layers is that the subnetworks have more parameters because you're taking k percent of the weights in each of the layer and as you increase the number of uh, filters, you're going to have more parameters. So in this chart, they're fixing the number of parameters by controlling this uh, k percentage so it's fixed despite the different width dimensions and they're still finding this increase in accuracy as they increase the width of the networks. This chart shows the performance gains of the edge pop-up algorithm compared to the super mass presented in deconstructing lottery tickets. So the red and blue charts on each of the networks are the edge pop-up algorithm compared to these four plots which are from the super mass algorithm. So also interestingly is they do this hyperparameter tuning on the super mass where they show the impact of sampling the initial randomly initialized weights in the dense network from this uh, normal distribution compared to a uniform distribution and showing how this kind of uh, hyperparameter tuning can improve the accuracy of the networks. 
This plot shows their exploration into the initialization algorithms for the randomly weighted neural network. So when you have this original dense architecture, you're randomly populating the weights with respect to these distributions, such as the Kyming normal, they introduce the scaled Kyming normal, or you might have a uniform distribution sampled from this Kyming distribution, or the normal Xavier distribution for initializing these neural networks. So in this plot, they show that the different initializations you use for the neural network actually has an enormous impact on the results of this edge pop-up uh, subnetwork pruning within the uh, original dense architecture. This plot shows the results of scaling up their experiment to the ImageNet scale. Interestingly, you see the result of having the wide ResNet subnetwork that isn't optimized, just randomly initialized weights, is able to perform on the same level as the ResNet 34 when it's optimized with stochastic gradient descent for this task. So also really interestingly to this plot is the performance difference between when the random weights are sampled from the normal distribution compared to the uniform distribution, sort of showing this ablation of how this kind of hyperparameter of how you initialize the weights could have this huge impact on finding the subnetworks within the dense architectures. So it's a really interesting plot showing the results of uh, finding these subnetworks within different architectures compared to uh, optimizing networks with stochastic gradient descent, optimizing the weights compared to finding subnetworks with randomly initialized weights. This table provides another view of the plot that we just saw with the ImageNet classification results with the different ResNets and the edge pop-up pruning algorithm for finding the subnetwork within the randomly initialized network. So we see this 73.3% accuracy found by finding the subnetwork within a randomly initialized wide ResNet 50 with this sine constant uh, initialization scheme compared to training a ResNet 34. So also interestingly is you see they have a similar number of parameters in this result. And also you can see the result uh, difference between the accuracy using this Kaimeng normal initialization compared to the sign constant is much higher in this case, showing sort of the impact of this initialization on this algorithm. This plot shows the performance differences between the edge pop-up algorithm and the super mask on the ImageNet scale. So you see that the edge pop-up algorithm is able to outperform the previous algorithm in the case of this ResNet 50 on ImageNet classification at different levels of sparsity. So also interestingly is this uh, performance in between 30 and 50% of the weights is when it achieves the highest accuracy on ImageNet. So it's just really surprising to see that this sub-network with 50% sparsity of the dense ResNet 50 is almost able to perform the same as the ResNet 50 when it's optimized, when the weights are optimized using SGD on this data set. Thanks for watching this explanation of what's hidden in a randomly weighted neural network. This is a head-scratching case that shows that even without uh, optimizing the parameters of these neural networks, you can find subnetworks within randomly initialized dense architectures that can perform pretty well and outperform a lot of their shallower counterparts, such as the difference between the wide ResNet 50 subnetwork and then the trained, optimized ResNet 34. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.